Buganda and the Showest and the Gayo Epsen is the Tandukubonga Umlim Ose Kulumi, the Pagat Guetu Nenegu Zake as the Kate Leo Ubana Zilolong, a similar say to Uwenzela Ubana, Lachi Sibe Kona, Ekaya, La says Win. Gunga ting a move, I will search and swung tico. See la shwe. See a bonga. Inconzo es puma pagat guay. Gatesi sesi kubega. Ne business ye tu. E kalise isolo tambama. Na si kubega. Niza tanda uguti niti pambili ngapa Nilama officers Awe South Zimbabwe Conference e Ubaba unjovu Simbonile izolo Ekele ni guake Silo mama u Mrs. Masugu Asimbonanga izolo Ntamba ama Ubeko na paga tukwetu Na mtanje uzilege Uguba pambili kwetu Lapa Gunye laati Oza gusipage Umtandazo uoguvula Nasi ngena Gulesi sika so shelo Nguye umama Umisis masugu UCFO Wetu Ibandaliti Leli Ituba Nizali Niga Yena Asipe Umtandazo Woguvula Asi Tinezeni Umaskulega Baba Wetu Ose Zulwini Sia Wong and Kulunkudu Nesipo Sempilo Sia wong and kulunkulu, singoba sia wona, uti loke us tunga me la was a wood figure and less cut. Kulunkulu got tasting masses at Tisingena, whose cover is land a lie, so who pa a man reports. Stellang and in kulunkulu, sing a la lela. Kutigong or mele sewus and kulunkulu sewus or wins a lie, is cut his song as together with twenty twenty one. Sia wong and kunukulu sitela e gaiten siako, stele de wisdom yako, stele njado de presence siako guena linda. Sia kulega wonke loko inga wuti si tembele gamene shala kusekubela nini. Amen. Sia wonga, si kubege la pambili, niza kela. Umfundi si unjovu, u executive secretary, we conference, ugbana atungamele, gulesi iskaba ese singena guso. Fundi si unjovu. Salubonan livugenjan. Pastor Chair. There is one correction that I would love us to make from the actions that we took last night. I want to correct the status of one of our members who was seated as an invitee, yet he he should be seated as a delegate at large. Pastor Chair, I move that we sit Jabulo Sivanda as a delegate at large. So I move, Pastor Chair. It has been moved. Anyone to second the motion? It has been seconded. Any observation? This was just a correction of uh, the mistake made yesterday. I don't see a hand. All those in favor, let's raise our right hands. 
Thank you very much. Opposed by the same sign, it carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor Chair. Realizing that today we are in our full swing of our meeting, I would love us to take out from our bags those two special papers. Those two special papers so that henceforth the voting is no longer by hand or voice but by those voting cards. We are going to use those voting cards, so keep them handy, keep them close to you, and uh, let us use them. Pastor Chair, I would love us to move on to the reports. The reports. We are now moving into reports. And the first one is the President's report. We are going to take the President's report now. Over to you. We now get into the President's report. As I said last evening, we are not going to go into all the details of the report. You already have these in your booklet. So what I'm going to do now is just to touch the highlights after which I will ask Elder Ngoma to present a, a short video. I'll begin by touching the highlights and then the video will conclude it all. Our report begins in 2021 up to today when we are gathered here. Right. I will begin by saying that the vision for this triennium was a spirit-led, soul-winning, nurturing, and faithful membership. This vision statement simply meant that, looking forward by the eye of faith, South Zimbabwe Conference saw all its members being spirit-led, winning souls, and nurturing both old and new convents. Thus, being faithful to the Great Commission, which says, Go ye therefore into the whole world and make disciples. In essence, this was the preferred future state and response of the whole or total membership of the conference to the Great Commission by personally and individually saying, I will go. This was and still is in line and harmony with the General Conference Initiative where everybody in the world church has vowed to say, I will go in the 2021 to 2025 
General Conference Quenquenium. This vision was broken down into four parts as follows. One, soul winning. The commitment of each and every member, that is total membership, to the apostleship of Christ spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and vaporizing it by the word of the mouth, I will go, results in the completion of the work of salvation. Let us note what the Spirit says. It says, the work of God in this earth can never be finished until the men and women comprising our membership rally to the work and unite their efforts with those of ministers and church officers. This comes from Gospel Workers, page 352. It also says that, Hundreds of men and women now idle could do acceptable service by carrying the truth into the homes of their friends and neighbors. They could do a great work for the master. This one comes from Testimonies for the Church, Volume Seven and Page Twenty One. Second part of the vision. Spirit-led. The source, motivation, and power for everyone to go is the Holy Spirit. Before the first century disciples went out to preach and witness, they were empowered by the Holy Spirit in the upper house as per Christ's promise. And great were the results. Similarly, all members of the church today have the same promise from Christ. Listen to what the Spirit says. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Christ Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Acts chapter 2 and verses 9 and 10. Listen to this one again. The descent of the Holy Spirit upon the church is looked forward to as in the future, but... It is the privilege of the church to have it now. Seek for it. Pray for it. Believe for it. We must have it. And heaven is waiting to bestow it. Let Christians ask in faith for the promised blessing. And it will come. Evangelism, page 701. Third part of the vision, nurturing. nurturing. Both old and new members should be read up for Christ. The synonyms of read are raised up, nurtured, tended, trained, educated, brought up, taken care of, washed over, looked after, etc. From whichever angle, all these verbs tell of what South Zimbabwe Conference members were to be found doing in the end of the triennium, that is 2023. Let's listen to this. The SDA Church Manual has the following to say. The Savior's commission to the church to carry the gospel to all the world meant not only preaching the gospel, but 
ensuring the welfare of those who accepted that message. This involved shepherding as well as housing the flock and also meeting relationship problems. This comes from the SDA Church Manual, page 26, 2015 edition. Fourth part and last part of the vision, that which guided us up to where we are now. Maybe some are wondering as to why I'm talking about the vision. It is the one that guided us from 2021 up to today, 2023, when we close the triennium. Faithful membership, that's the fourth part. The spirit of prophecy says, I quote, every true believer is born into the kingdom of God as a missionary. He who drinks of the living water becomes a fountain of life. The receiver becomes a giver. The grace of Christ in the soul is like a spring in the desert, welling up to refresh all and making those who are ready to perish eager to drink of the water of life. This one comes from the book, Desire of Ages, page 195. Again, it says, I quote, to save souls should be the life work of everyone who professes Christ. We are debtors to the world for the grace given us of God, for the light which has shone upon us, and for the discovered beauty and power of the truth. This one comes from Testimonies, Volume 4, page 53. And what is the conclusion? Here is the conclusion. Every member is a missionary of God, a steward of the serving grace of God, and it is expected that every steward be found faithful. This is what guided us and propelled us to this day. Conference goals and achievements. The goals below were for the 2021 to 2023 triennium. They began to be realized through the actual action steps taken by each conference department. These goals were born from the mandate given by the Plans and Resolutions Committee of the November 2020 South Zimbabwe Conference session. In other words, what we were doing, the goals that we set didn't just come out of our heads, but from the Plans and Resolutions Committee of the 2020 session. And these plans, I'm not going to uh, read them, because they are found on pages 15 and 16 in your booklets. And I hope we read them as I requested us to do the reading last night. Goal number one, to have baptized and nurtured 28,000 souls. In December 2020, each conference department put down action plans and steps for winning souls through its Department. Though the COVID-19 lockdowns disturbed evangelism and baptisms, the first quarter of 2021 saw three baptisms. You can see the disturbance. For three months, baptizing only three people. The second saw 1,276, the third, 
285, and the fourth, 1,133, giving us a total of 2,697 souls in 2021. The first quarter of 2022 had 1,054 souls baptized. The second, 1,676. The third, 1,108. And the fourth, 1,277, totaling to 5,115 souls for 2022. This adds up to 7,812 souls that were baptized in 2021 and 2022. Let's take note of the following. Compared to 2021, where we had only 2,697 souls that were baptized, in the year 2022, we had a significant harvest that saw 5,115 souls being baptized, almost double the 2021 figure. This year, that is 2023, we had 760 souls baptized in the first quarter. 1,892 in the second, and 1,872 in the third, and 1 the first quarter of uh, the first part of October, thus giving us a total of 4,524 souls. The total number of baptisms, as at the compilation of this report, was 12,374 for the two years and ten months of this triennium, which is a good harvest indeed, taking note of the disturbances that the devil had brought to the church. Praise be to the Lord of the harvest for the souls that were baptized. See the executive secretary's report for the breakdown of the baptisms district by district. Membership audit. The good news in our membership audit is that we finished this exercise ahead of the general conference deadline of December 2022. As a grateful gesture to our churches, for the hard work done, we sent certificates of appreciation to all our churches. And to appreciate our work, the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division, that is our division, rewarded our conference with a new laptop and a plaque for finishing the membership audit before the deadline. What does the church say? We praise God for seeing us through and also for making our higher organization recognize the work that we did. Goal number two. We have realigned at least three districts and boundaries for districts that need such attention by 2023. Church pastors and church members were made aware of this intentional move. As a result, the following in this area was done. One, the shared boundaries of Filabusi Berengwa and Abazinduna East Districts were revisited. Taking three churches with their companies, namely Mberengwa Central, Chingezi and Mwembe from Mberengwa District, two churches with their companies, namely Mawolo and 
Watemba, and also two companies, Mazea and Zwikombe, from Gender Church in Filabusi District, and finally two churches with their companies, namely Virginia and Ntwagazi from Tabazinduna East District, a new district named Mchingwe was created. And a pastor was placed in that new district. Two, Escotini District, which had 21 churches under one pastor, was divided into two districts. Escotini North, with eight churches and six companies and their branch supper schools. And Escotini South, with 13 churches, 14 companies, and 12 branch suburb schools. Three, Inguizi Mapisa District, which was composed of 16 churches and their companies, was divided into two districts, Mpoyens District, with five churches, and Mapisa District, with 11 churches and their companies. Four. Thank you. SAS district was divided into two districts. Solusi district on the southern side of the Bulawayo Cholocho Road and SAS on the northern side of the same. Five. Bait Bridge East district was divided into three districts, namely Bait Bridge Central District, composed of the Bait Bridge Town Churches. Bait Bridge North District, composed of the territory between Bait Bridge Bulawayo and Bait Bridge Maswingo Roads, and Bait Bridge East Districts, covering the area southeast of the Bait Bridge Maswingo Road. Number six. Gwanda District was also divided into two districts. I'm now leaving some information since you have that. Tabazindunda District, Waterford, and Hillside were also visited. Some churches were taken out of Waterford and Tabazindunda to form a new district called Mbizo. And that's the growth of the conference from 2021 up to 2023. And as a result, we have the number of districts reported in your booklet and the number of churches that are reported there. And may I ask you to see the tables under this goal for the benefits of what happened. Okay, we also had, let me leave the other uh, goals. We also had a prayer ministry begun where we challenged all our prayer bands, all our members to pray every Wednesday, praying for four things. One, Praying for the latter rain so that we receive the Holy Spirit in his fullness. Two, praying for the Lord to stop the COVID pandemic. Three, that we should be involved, every one of us, in the soul winning process. And finally, for whatever eventuality in the great controversy, where we are looking forward to the enforcement of Sunday law, which is by the door. And we are praying, God, to make us ready. And let me say, in all these goals, God answered our prayers. And one such answer, or let me say two. One, the COVID pandemic was stopped. Two, the general conference met last year in June and decreed that for these two years, 2023 and 2024, we distribute the book 
great controversy. That was a direct answer to our prayers, and we thank God for that. For some of the things, please refer to your booklet. And then finally, let me say, we wanted our schools to answer to the need of the great controversy, especially its climax. When people shall be forced to receive the mark of the beast. You read the book, Great, great Controversy, it says we should stand and be supported by the Lord. We should not be engaged in alliances that will make it easy for our people and our children to accept the mark of the beast. With this, we embarked in the privatization activity. And this is ongoing because it is God's desire that we prepare for the mark of the beast by standing on him alone. Thank you very much. These are the short highlights, the few highlights of the report that you have in its fullest. At this juncture, let me ask Elder Ngoma to give us a video that shows the live activities of what I have just reported. Thank you. Nestled in the heart of Zimbabwe, Bulawayo shines as a vibrant and culturally rich city. As the country's second largest urban centre, it carries immense historical and artistic importance. It is the largest city in the South Zimbabwe Conference constituency. For over a century, the Adventist Church has played a significant role in Zimbabwe's religious fabric, contributing to its diverse spiritual landscape. The South Zimbabwe Conference of Seventh-day Adventists is more than just a building. It is a place of worship where people come together to share their faith, to support each other through life's ups and downs, and to make a positive difference in the world around them. Join us as we take a closer look at the South Zimbabwe Conference of Seventh-day Adventists headquartered in Bulawayo, a community of faith and hope in the heart of Zimbabwe. The following are the goals for the 2021 to 2023 triennium that commence their realization through concrete action steps within each conference department and ministry. These goals originated from the mandate issued by the Plans and Resolutions Committee during the November 2020 South Zimbabwe Conference session. Every year, thousands of people across the world make the life-changing decision to be baptized. For many, it is a moment of transformation, a chance to start anew and be reborn in faith. For the members of the church, baptism is a deeply personal and meaningful experience. It is a chance to publicly declare their faith and commit themselves to a life of service and love. Goal 1. To have baptized and nurtured 28,000 souls. This goal speaks to the church's commitment to spreading the message of hope and salvation to as many people as possible. Though the COVID-19 lockdown negatively affected baptisms, evangelistic campaigns were held by all districts throughout the conference. The conference offices and directors also conducted three evangelistic programs just before the conference-wide ones which will run from the 15th to the 28th of May 2022 under the theme, Jesus Christ the Coming King. The conference organized various evangelistic programs with a special emphasis on underreached and unreached communities. Evangelistic programs were held for the San, Venda, Kalanga, Sutu, White and special needs communities and a total of 660 souls were baptised in these unreached and unreached communities. Four worship centres have been established in prisons. These and other efforts have resulted in 565 inmates getting baptised. Choosing to be baptised is a profound decision that often challenges the grip of evil forces. 
occasionally evident in the struggle of demons trying to retain their hold on certain souls. Nevertheless, we are grateful to God that despite this spiritual contention, these evangelistic efforts have led to the baptism of a remarkable total of 12,374 individuals. With the aim of fostering the growth and nurturing the church community, the conference dedicated its efforts to organizing and implementing a wide array of programs. These initiatives were designed to encourage spiritual development, facilitate meaningful connections, and support the overall well-being of the congregation. The Preacher's Training Program accomplished the training of 367 people, along with the successful execution of 487 evangelistic campaigns. Additionally, the conference placed significant emphasis on training 16,410 individuals in the art of witnessing. The Advent message to the entire world in my generation serves as the guiding principle for the Adventist Pathfinder Club. Pathfinders from the South Zimbabwe Conference were among the 2,300 participants who gathered at the Salusi campsite for the Zimbabwe West Union Conference Pathfinder Campery. Their event centered around the theme, I will serve the Lord. Engaging in various activities, the Pathfinders aim to foster spiritual, mental, physical and social development. Camp meetings were organized throughout the conference over the triennium, with the exception of the COVID-19 period. Joint multicultural camp meetings were also convened. Notably, 350 adventurers participated in a camp out at Seleucy University, while 51 widows and widowers embarked on a weekend retreat themed blessed and highly favoured in Nyanga. Additionally, a youth camp took place in Nyanga, Zimbabwe Eastern Highlands. Women from the South Zimbabwe Conference participated in women's ministries congresses held throughout the triennium. These included the Zimbabwe Union Conference Women's Ministries Congress, attended by the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division Women's Ministries Director, as well as regional women's ministries congresses conducted in Malawi and Zambia. Furthermore, a local women's ministries congress held at Muchenwi resulted in the baptism of 17 individuals. These initiatives, among various others, were designed to foster the spiritual growth of members and anchor them in their faith. Goal 2. To have realigned at least three districts and boundaries for districts that need such attention by 2023. At the start of the triennium, we had 29 districts, and due to realignment efforts, we have now expanded to 36 districts. Within these 36 districts, a total of 223 churches have been organized. Goal 3 to have promoted a holistic approach to stewardship and raised membership faithfulness in tithes and offerings to 80%. The conference conducted seminars specifically designed for local church treasurers, aiming to enhance their abilities in managing God's resources and promoting good stewardship practices. These seminars provided valuable insights and practical guidance to empower treasurers in their important roles within the church community. The conference also organized the Adventist Church Management System Treasury Module Workshops. Sessions anticipated to significantly enhance the efficiency, transparency and accuracy of the tasks carried out by local church treasurers. Seminars were impeccably orchestrated throughout the conference, accompanied by holy convocation programs that passionately underscored the importance of commitment and responsible stewardship. These events were carefully designed to inspire and educate attendees, nurturing a deep understanding of the responsibility to wisely manage resources and embody faithful stewardship in all aspects of life. Currently, the faithfulness rate of membership is recorded at 44% for the year 2023, contrasting with 16.8% in 2022 and 40.5% in 2021. In terms of free will offerings, the percentage of gross tithe was 69.4% in 2021, increased to 75.2% in 2022, and has further improved to 83% in 2023, signifying a noticeable positive trend in this particular area. Goal 4. To have improved infrastructure and built at least five new structures in the conference territory by investing in infrastructure development, 
the conference is better equipped to serve its members and the communities in which it operates. It is a testament to the Church's commitment to its mission and its dedication to supporting the needs of its members. In the South Zimbabwe Conference, infrastructure development plays a critical role in supporting the Church's mission and ministry. Madlong Budzi Church in Bulalima District was constructed, completed and dedicated. A residential stand has been secured for the building of a pastor's house in Winnesi West. Additionally, there are ongoing construction projects for three new schools. Advent Hope Adventist Primary School, Plumtree Adventist Secondary School and Philabusi Adventist Secondary School. Additionally, 12 churches underwent repairs and were repainted as part of evangelistic programs. Notably, a church in Chikumbidzi received a revitalized appearance when union officers along with a dedicated team, worked on its refurbishment. Repairs were conducted on the church houses in Mapissa, Bike Bridge West, Dundee Drive and Fomona. Jojo tanks were installed for the houses in Bike Bridge and Zazani, along with the installation of a solar system for the house in Zazani. Furthermore, Visor Clinic was generously donated a complete solar system. We are also pleased to report that Tima Teme Clinic has been completed and was officially opened by the Deputy Minister of Health and Child Welfare. Goal 5. To have the conference farm functional and productive. Significant developments have taken place at the farm recently. In 2022, a successful project was initiated, focusing on egg-laying chickens. The project has been thriving, contributing positively to the farm's productivity and potential profitability. Similarly, a beekeeping project was launched, boasting five beehives. This endeavor aims to harness the benefits of natural pollination while potentially generating honey and other bee-related products. Cattle were generously donated to the farm. However, due to stringent veterinary controls in place to prevent the spread of animal diseases, their transfer to the farm was regrettably impeded. Nevertheless, future possibilities for accommodating the cattle will be explored. Goal 6. To have needs-oriented programs. The benefits of needs-oriented programs in the Adventist Church are many. They help to address the root causes of poverty and inequality, promote health and well-being, and foster a sense of community and connection among members. From providing access to health care and education, to offering job training and support for those in need, the South Zimbabwe Conference is dedicated to making a positive impact on the lives of its members and the broader community. The Adventist youth built a church in Bike Bridge East for the vendor community. A house was also built for an elderly widower in Tabazin Duna who had been living in a dilapidated hut. <laughs> A total of 12 houses were built for the needy. The themes reaching out to cultures, colors and communities 2021. Loving the Forgotten in 2022 and Love is Action Year 2023 drove the activities of the Global Youth Day during the Triennium. These reflected the idea that the gospel is not just words. It must be expressed in practical actions, attention and care for others. In local Adventist churches, young people organize themselves to visit hospitals and orphanages and distribute items food, clothes, shoes, hygiene kits, toys and blankets to welfare institutions and homeless people. The youth visited in Gutshini Hospital, Wanda Hospital, King George Six Children's Centre, St Francis Children's Hospital, 
Johnson Mail Children's Home, an Ekapumalini geriatric nursing home where they donated clothing, foodstuffs and a number of other items. The children not to be outdone by their seniors also went out and performed acts of kindness to the less fortunate. They contributed school uniforms, shoes and stationery to students in need. Additionally, a shelter was constructed for less fortunate children in Mapissa. A clean-up campaign was carried out in Barengwa where a groundbreaking ceremony was also held for Barengwa Central Adventist Church. Six desk bins were donated by the Adventist children. Madlong Budzi Clinic in Bulalima, situated 72 kilometers from Plum Tree Town, was the recipient of 44 bed sheets and 55 pillowcases. This donation proved timely as the clinic had depleted its bedding supply for patients. <laughs> The mother's shelter at Badger Clinic underwent renovations and enhancements, including the addition of eight new mattresses, bedding, ten folding chairs, curtains and twelve blankets. Additionally, a thatched kitchen was constructed. Furthermore, 24 waiting mothers were provided with hampers, a comprehensive total of 82 health expos, together with 124 health programs were carried out throughout the conference. Vacation Bible school programs were held throughout the conference and a total number of 4,204 children attended of which 494 were non-Adventists. A business and professional seminar was held in Bite Bridge Central, which saw 25 members, including non-Adventists, attending. An Adventist Layman's Services and Industries chapter was established at the week-long Business and Professionals Empowerment Meeting. A program focusing on women's empowerment took place in Mutendeli, educating community members on crafting lotions and chemicals for livestock dipping. A conference for widows, widowers and single parents convened at Tully Hills, drawing a total attendance of 70 individuals, including six non-Adventists. I've learned that I should have self-esteem, I should have confidence, I should not look down upon myself. By offering these needs-oriented programs, the church is demonstrating its commitment to serving the needs of its members and the broader community. It is a reminder that, no matter where we are in the world, we can all make a difference by addressing the needs of those around us. Goal 7. To have equipped the conference adequately. From building new churches, schools and clinics to upgrading technology and equipment, the conference is investing in the infrastructure that is needed to support its growing membership and outreach efforts. The conference acquired a Toyota Hires for the transportation of workers to and from their homes. Additionally, 13 laptops were purchased and a Suprema access control system was implemented to bolster security at the conference offices. Furthermore, an electricity backup system has been installed to address the recurring power cuts experienced by the office. This system ensures uninterrupted power supply and enhances the office's resilience in the face of potential disruptions. In addition to the aforementioned dedicated endeavours, the Adventist Church is passionately engaged in a mission to share the message of hope and salvation. This mission is manifested through the wide distribution of the impactful book titled The Great Controversy. Through this initiative, the Church aims to reach hearts and minds, offering profound insights into the eternal truths and principles that shape our spiritual journey. This book, written by Ellen G. White, explores the conflict between good and evil throughout history and the role of the church in this struggle. For those who receive the book, it can be a life-changing experience. It offers a message of hope and inspiration and the opportunity to explore the deeper truths of the Christian faith. 18,854 books have been distributed so far. Thank you very much. This is not exhaustive. This was just highlights here and there. With this, Pastor Chair, I move that this report be accepted as presented. It's been moved. Anyone seconding? 
it's seconded. Thank you very much. Um, any observations that we would like, love to share? We have two mics here. If you think you have an observation to share, take your position at the mic. We will give you an opportunity to talk, and we have five minutes for that. The rest we might, this might come in the departmental reports because these were highlights of what happened in all the departments. Any observations, please get to the mic and uh, we will give you an opportunity to, to talk. We have mics here, one on my right and one on my left. If there is nothing, then we can move. <clears throat> No, sir. Let's observe the, the mics so that everybody hears. You can go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Pastor Chair. Uh, mine uh, is on the baptisms. Our baptisms, our baptism is commendable considering the COVID-19 constraint but I'm on page, 100, uh, page 20 of this booklet where there are familiar faces here of the same community, which is a hard nut to crack. Uh, um, my question is, uh, from what I see, there is 157 souls were baptized. And then my question is, uh, as South Zimbabwe Conference, what have we done to... Uh, embrace this new baby uh, on the block. What have we done, especially on infrastructure development? Because these people are very difficult. We are also dealing with them separately. I'm from Plumtree District. This is Bulilima. But I'm happy to see these people coming on board. It's a great uh, achievement to us. But my question is, what have we done, especially on infrastructure development, uh, are there plans to take a one-day church structure they haven't been there or it has been uh, erected already? I don't know. Because my question is, once they are baptized, these people, they don't associate with anyone else. They always make sure that uh, if Ndebele comes, if Kalanga comes, then they go away. So as a church, what have we done to, uh, uh, to accommodate them uh, separately? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, be to the point to save time. We'll take one more question so that he responds. Okay. Mina Antana Gubu Zanje, Iva Lukuti Privatization of Schools, Privatization of Schools, Kutukuchun, Kunoko Dala Kadis Ranangan, Ipra the Jason Day, Kanyaguti, we had Mazango Badang a church or low Badang a church, Emu Vade, who was paying these people. Who was paying the school? Then Okunye, I'm a challenge. Atolakala Kuma Kufam. I'm a rumor. So was right during these years. Kutua Kwafan, Dwangavani, I'm a tractors and so forth, so forth. Where did they go? Kwasevin Zan, Umtulo, I was a matractor. I saw a Zuzuanga. Ukutuya needs a farm. If farm is in great problems, you could change the Kota Noku, Sakusa, Kuma paper, Kuma media. Right. Okuya Machad is the Swatola, Kuma, Sibonire Pakat Lapana, Ukuaka, Ama Church, building churches, Kukunzi Makiti. So my suggestion would be it in a Benginayo, Imades Verema Chechini, offerings, announcing a total three quarters. Then a quarter I have a conference, good squads of Kuaka, Ama Church, you are Machad is in Ubonego. I don't want to love a bank and I can assist you to see a pump in Yabo. Thank you very much. That shows a very great interest in, our, in your church. We will give uh, the president to respond to those observations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, concerning those people at Twai Twai, you will remember that most of us went there. Sasi Twele, Izinto Zoguba Niga, Izinto Zoguti, Baznet Sengazo, 
And finally, Gwaba the commitment to build a church Konangale. Konaloko is underway. Bazabe Sebengenela a church a right. Ogunye esiku kangileyo nge twai twai ngale yiguti at least nga singa tola umuntu oenelisa ugu kuluma uli miluabo atale labo abe nguye umfundi siwabo. But as you all know, gunzi magakulu ngapa es kalangin uguti stole umuntu ongenza konoko. But we are trying our level best. That is what I can say about that group over there. Then, Sisiya Gogula Ndelayo, Napa, concerning the donated farm equipment, we have not yet received the equipment. It was donated. We were called to go to Harare and we saw the equipment. It was not only the farm equipment that was donated, we were also given a equipment for about eight of our secondary schools, or let me say of our schools. That equipment has not come. Aiga bui, go to Sahamba Saibone, Harare, what is a buya. Basebe City this last month in November, they were distributing the equipment in Mashona land. They are done. In the near future, they are coming to our side. And of a significance, demonstrating that uh, they are coming two or three weeks ago, they invited one member from SAS, our, our high school here, to come to Harare. That person spent some days a train wa konangali uguti i equipment lay i seben zanjan wa sebuya sependugile i equipment is a landela. Yatemba, that's what I can say. Is into zienza galaba zalwan. See ya bom. Thank you. There was one here. Timekeeper, I hope you have your time. Thank you, Mr. He Executive. says it's time up, so we'll just honor these two that have already come to the mic. Um, some of the questions might be relating to some departments. Please, let's bring them up in those departmental reports. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Executive Secretary. I would like to appreciate the move which the conference has taken in the past three years on upgrading our infrastructure. Our infrastructure has now been known for wrong reasons in the community. If someone is asking for directions, they'll be like, ah, there's that shit over there. If you turn over there, showing that our infrastructure was now known for being dilapidated and unmaintained. But over these three years, we've seen massive improvements, and we pray that that positive step continues. I also would like to appreciate I've seen active moves by the conference to reach out to minority ethnicities and minority tribes such that the gospel of the Lord reaches to all corners. Right. We would also love to hear more on the challenges which the conference has faced on to, to reach to these minority groups and also just as an encouragement that when it comes to minority issues, the conference should also seek to actively engage with the members on the ground so that they can help each other to face solutions to the problems they may face. You never know, your solutions might not be at the conference office or union office, but at those local churches. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate the last one. Sondela go mic. Niyabonga mpato selo, siyabonga loguzwa iripote esi zuleo. Minabengila pa ebu wako nguwa machechi. Sizwile umfundi zilapana kutu magwa kwa wama chechi. So, mina uwa mumbuzi buko na pana kutu ama chechi. Kwa kula mazi destroy tona la ama cha. Ukuti angetisega njani. Mwaka ezi kate zinene. Sitola na la ama destroy tona la ama cha. Kuhusiba lukuwa mwaka. 
Kukuma ground gave to serve a singular mundo with Tatina Snitis. So when thing out to see Susis upon a singer to say, and John, Thank you very much. In a summarized way, we'll give our pastor to respond before we move on. Thank you very much, Sia Wonga. A over who sends our goodies into Zwe. Na ama districts amacha esewe bunjiwe, gumbe, ama churches amacha ese vuliwe, yiguti, gwa gunga bi laba fundi si abafagwa konapo. Gates inya teresli teteo, guo wonke ama district amacha vuliweo, gulon fundis in fundis in fundis, ogumela supervise. Na gule ma needs and everything. Mwe o communicator le conference. E conference if you tata nyatelo bani. Let me assure you, Uguti Abafundisi, Baza Nanzelela, Bakulume, Njalo, Umopalai Zwe, Njoma Dibonile, e stewardship department, Imopalaiza, Ama Builders, Uguti Bake, Nyabo. Thank you very much. O Ogokina, Ubegunombus, Ogutkona, a Ama teacher, a holy song by Nugunjai. Na si city si a private. Ama teacher la wonke abe se holy swa liban la. Njeoba wupailue la pana wu report. Ushu pesiba nalo yi lolo. Ama teacher la anga holy swa liban la. A hola wenye indao. Baya hamba baye gu industrial action. Banga bui esko lo. Benze gonke lo kiana. Kutina bantu abetwenga sa fundi. Kodwa ba teacher la be holy swaiti asoga gwenze kupi kona loko yiko esiku choyo ne privatization njalo ogu familia yo estwa iluku guzwa iloko singa hamba pande ngale sike city imfundo ya masabata inje ne inje inje ilungisele la bantu ana uti ba benga ma good citizens la la sembu sweni ozayo. Si chie siku kulu mile guma pati la guma tichala. Ogusala kusenza gala. Yiguti la paba hona kona. Kwe sinskati. Nga sebe kulu na kutuwa kona. Remember where your bread is buttered. If you go this direction, know that your bread won't be buttered. Yiko se sisiti kuna nguti bahone kona po. Nga so gunjalo. Tina, we are now able to say, remember where your bread is buttered. And they will tell the lie. Thank you very much. We, I can entertain question now. Question is called. All in favor of this report, please raise your yes card. Thank you. Opposed, no card. It's carried. Thank you so much. Over to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. As we proceed, I shall take this opportunity to call upon our Executive Secretary to give his report. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. The Secretariat report it's already in our report books. I will just give a few highlights in the interests of time. The Secretariat Department exists to provide leadership, management, and coordination in policy compliance, meetings management, and records keeping, and to facilitate the realization of the conference vision. This is what guides us in the activities that we do in the Secretariat Department. We are endeavoring to reach out so that we answer to that uh, which has been given. We have a number of goals that we were working towards and I will just give a summary of each of those goals. Goal one, to ensure that the conference vision 
values and goals are understood by the entire conference membership. Each year has been, we have been doing launches and also reviews and other follow-up meetings. And in all those, we have endeavored to teach the church to bring to the realization our vision as a conference, our values, our goals, so that each of the leaders, and not only the leadership of the church, but the members understand that it helps to make sure that we are moving in the same direction. Goal number two has this to say, to enter 100% of the conference membership into the Adventist church membership system. Uh, as it said earlier on, one of the things that we are focusing on as secretariat is to make sure that we keep the records of our members. I'm happy to say the conference managed to complete its task of putting all our members into the ACMS in record time before the SID uh, due date. And because of that, our conference was awarded a plaque as an appreciation and also a laptop from the SID uh, as they were appreciating a job well done. We thank God for that. You will notice that also in our report books that uh, 2021 first quarter, maybe may I request that we make a correction there on that. It's written 2022, but it should be 2021. First quarter of the 31,793 uh, which were figures that we had and we also have on the table there on the next page. Of, the, of that number, 31,750 are figures without names. That's a challenge that we realized that there were figures that were coming in and were being recorded at the end of the day we try to match the figures with the names. We find that we have more figures than the names that we have in our registers. And ACMS has come to address that issue to make sure that with the figure, we have the name so that those two tally. And 2022, fourth quarter, of the 19,609, 19,557 are missing members. You will see that on the table also. So ACMS membership is at 53,447 and 61,261 is the total inclusive of the missing members because the missing members have to be removed in a manner that is given in the provided for in the church manual. We don't just remove them once. There is a process that, follow, that is followed, and we still have those. Hence, you, you will see that it's 61,261, uh, inclusive of the missing members. Then 6,747 of the missing member of the 19,557 has been adjusted out from the ACMS membership as missing members. So there we have the ratios, female, male, and the unstated. Uh, may, may I clear the air there? The unstated not like what is there in the world that you say, are you male or female, or you are yet to decide. The unstated figure demonstrate the importance of capturing all relevant data at the point of entry. Be it at baptism, there are those green slips. We want to emphasize to the church clerks that all the relevant detail that is needed on that form, please fill it out. Because when we get it to the ACMS register, you find that the, 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 pinks, or the, the green slip has not indicated whether this person is male or female and it remains unstated. So we want to 
emphasize that to our church clerks, let's fill out all the necessary information. It helps us to have uh, the right data. The current statistical record of our membership as at end of 30, the third quarter, 2023, stands at 42,217 members. That is the current in our statistical record. Goal number three, to have all church clerks write minutes according to the Adventist standard of writing minutes. This has been done annually, and um, realizing that some of the church clerks keep changing, we want to make sure that each year we run these seminars and help them to write minutes in the Adventist standards. There are so many ways of writing minutes. Some are verbal team and so on, but we have our way and our standard as Seventh-day Adventists, and we want to encourage every church to do that. Hence, we do the training with our church clerks in that line. Goal number, number four, to have all church boards familiar with parliamentary procedures. It's very critical for our church boards to run in the right manner, following the parliamentary procedures. Hence, we do that every year, trying to educate our church boards and help them realize uh, or follow the proper parliamentary procedures. It helps them to run their meetings efficiently. Goal number five, to have all church boards know how to prepare a church board agenda. That gets closely uh, tied to goal number four, but it's a different one altogether. So these have been given to our church board members and uh, also to our school heads, administrators in our schools together with their secretaries, how to prepare an agenda for a school board. They have been given those lessons to assist them and we keep on doing it annually so that every year those that come in to lead out, they are uh, abreast with the ways of preparing a church board agenda. Goal number six, to have all conference workers familiar with the church's working policy. Our workers are governed by the church's working policy and each meeting we have, we update them with different policies. It's, the policy book is a very thick uh, volume, but we pick on those that we feel are relevant at each time and try to help our workers be abreast with the working policy. And we have also afforded every worker um, a soft copy of the working policy so that whenever they are home, they can just browse through, they can study it, they can uh, learn and understand how the church uh, functions. We began with 29 districts in the Trianum and we have grown to 36 by now. We began with 212 churches, we have grown to 223. Baptisms today date, as it was shown on the DVD, 12,374 against a goal of 28,000. We realize we haven't really gone that much, but we thank God for those that God gave us to minister to and win into the faith. Finally, we have deliberately reached out to different people groups as it has been shown on the DVD and also we have it in our report books. We have people groups that form part of our constituency and uh, we have made it deliberate that we reach out to them because it is our responsibility to so do. The report gives us the breakdown, which to date has been overtaken by current situation on the ground because there are some that have already been baptized after this report was made. So the figures that we see there might have been overtaken by events on the ground because we still are ministering and winning more of those. The church worldwide is emphasizing on mission and that takes into consideration these sort of neglected languages and people groups. Revelation 14 verses 6 to 7 talks of the gospel to all nations, all tribes, tongues, and people. And so we want to reach out to these. And by the way, it is the general conference thrust 
to say, let us move on to those people groups. When we have 5,000 members in Plum Tree, and out of the 5,000, we have seven uh, Kalanga people, we have not reached out to Plum Tree. It's an unentered area. We must be having those language groups in the uh, majority of the membership to say we have made a meaningful contribution and a meaningful enrich to those people groups. So we want to be deliberate, we want to move that direction, and those that come in as immigrants from other areas into the particular area should make sure that they assist as much as possible in reaching out to those. Pastor Chair, I move the acceptance of the Secretariat report as presented. Thank you very much. It has been moved. Someone to second the motion. Second it. Thank you. Any observations, comments, or questions? If you have any, please move to the front before the mic and then make your comment, observation, or question. We have two in front here. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, last time we started on my left, so this time we are starting on our right. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for that report. I've got just a few observations here with me. Uh, the first one is uh, concerning the launches that we normally do during the beginning of the year. I uh, would like to commend the church for bringing the launches to the people. We'll remember that uh, uh, yesterday we used to come to Bulawayo for launches, but now the church is coming to the people. But at the same time, I've realized this, this trend that usually happens. When uh, the pastors are coming to the district to launch, uh, they are inadequately equipped as far as manpower is concerned. For example, uh, you will realize that uh, a single pastor will have to launch something like five departments within the space of two hours or less than two hours. And what usually happens is this, umfundi suzabuya, I department lay in Jomoy local local opening is as funded. By doing that, Lichia Avantu Wenga was Utbay Wenzan, Lichela Avantu information Avanga was the Wissevensis. So if the church can Angasu Nenswanjan, Utinali, we are Nali, we liquanil, so that each department let it launch so that Avantu Babe was Utisa Wenzan in Ali, unlike Uchela Avantu information. The second observation, Nancy, is just a question on the working police. The question is that, or is this, the working police, who can access the working police? Is it only the church workers, like the pastors, or the conference workers, or even the church members themselves, they can have access to the working police? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Maybe you can... You have noted that one down. Thank you. He will respond. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm looking at um, trying to join our membership re report with our baptisms reported in the president's report. And significantly, I think we were less than 50% of our target in baptisms. But then when you um, look at that with the secretariat report, on page 52, um, I'm not sure how this can be explained uh, from an organizational point of view. We started the triennium with 54,000 members. No, no, sorry, with 84,000 members. We have ended the triennium with 42,000. Uh, through the administrative processes that have happened, we've lost 50% of our membership. I'm not sure how that can be explained or reconciled, especially in light of the fact that even our baptism goals are less than 50% of 
uh, what we want, what we set out to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Noted. You will respond next. <clears throat> Afternoon, church. I would love, first of all, to refer my observation to First Peter 6, verse 7, which says, You are the chosen nation, the, belong, the belongings to the Lord, the peculiar family. But I wonder on this one, on the division of the district, that are we aiming at excellence when we are told that the churches have moved to a great number of 36. Have you ever realized about the churches on the towns whereby you have to research on the land that having divided that district, will the churches that remain on the certain portion in the town able to have the place and the space to construct their church? The number does it fit that they are able to maintain and sustain the construction of the church? Because on the ground, the church that have been divided, some of them might fall and we don't ever talk about them. So I would like to know how far did you research on this one? And I want to know whether is it the conference on top there who should come on the ground to say we want to divide this party? Or is the people, the church members on the ground so that they will keep and maintain what they have seen as if possible? Thank you. Thank you very much. Next. Thank you for the opportunity, Mr. President. I'd like to appreciate the report given by the Executive Secretary. I note and I've got two questions pertaining to it. First, I would like to appreciate the move which the church is taking to advance technologically by putting the membership into the ACMS. However, I've got a question as to how the church has managed or what challenges it is facing to reach this digital computer way of operating into remote areas within the constituency, areas without electricity and without uh, technological education. Has the conference faced any challenges? And in view of those challenges, does the conference need help from members who can help in that area? Then my second question, right, pertains to the growth of the conference from 29 to 36 districts. I would like to ask what criteria the conference uses to group churches together. For example, does it permit to group a vernacular and an English-speaking church in one district? Does it permit to group an English-speaking and a multicultural church in one district? I have a question pertaining to that. And then part B of the question is, does the conference look at the community needs when it comes to setting up of churches? I notice there are some low density areas in Bulawayo which house people of multiple ethnicities and uh, tribes, but the only church available would be a vernacular church. If we try to do one member, one soul, in such areas, it would be difficult to bring those guys to the church because of language barriers. Could there be a need to put a threshold pertaining to the distribution of English-speaking churches, looking at the setup of communities? And also, would the conference consider a need maybe to set up a vernacular church in the central point of the constituents like the CPT? Because we also notice there is an increased growth of vernacularization into some of the English-speaking churches which are supposed to serve convenience to people who do not understand English. I thank you so much. Thank you very much. We shall now hand over to the Executive Secretary to respond to each of these questions. Thank you very much. Um, that was a mouthful. Cons on issue of inadequacy of time, on the launches, that one is a given. There was a, 
a program in radio some years back, Usakelene Zinini. Why it Babetibona Imibuzo Imneng Ovedula in Bendul. But um, that doesn't stop us from doing all we can to make sure that we have answers to those questions. It's a very pertinent question or observation, and um, I'm sure we are listening. We also had tried to, to come to that, but we might not be able to move as a group to one district at a time, looking at the period that is, um, and the number of weeks that we have. Uh, for instance, we took up to the end of first quarter doing the, these launches or reviews, and we want to give time to the local church to do work so that we don't spend the whole uh, year going into the districts and uh, having people not working. So that's a point taken. We have noted it. On the working policy, generally for a local church, we have our policy book, which is called the church manual. So we do well to stick to the church manual. The working policy, according to the Seventh-day Adventist, it is for institutions and also for, for workers. So for a local church, we, we don't normally run the church using a working policy. That's for institutions, schools, hospitals, conferences, and so on. And the church manual is our book as a local church. So let's stick to it and do it much uh, in applying it. Then uh, on, the, on page 52, we started with 54,000 and it ended with 42,000. That's a cause of concern and we are concerned. But you will notice that uh, of those figures, we have that the adjustments out that were quite high. And those adjustments out included the, the missing members that we are now taking out, and also those that were without names, which were names without uh, people. So those were very high figures, and when they were adjusted out, they brought our, our membership figure quite low. But we are hoping that as soon as we clean up this ACMS register to have the proper uh, adjustments, then we know when we take off, we are now taking off from a positive uh, plane going up. So before that, we'll be adjusting out, taking those that are missing and taking out those that um, are without, the just names without the, the people. And the process is coming to, to a, an end. We are imploring those churches that have not done that they have those big figures, please drop the missing members so that we start with a proper figure and then we can grow. And on dividing of churches, the availability of stands, yes, um, that could be a challenge and uh, it's quite a passionate one, but uh, we still have to face the challenges and do something to address those challenges. And one of the ways of addressing those challenges is going the house church's way, where we are saying, let's meet as small groups. It's not uh, really growing the church to have a, a church of 4,000 people. There is less interaction of members. And uh, we understand there are challenges of getting stands to build those small churches here and there, but we will still try to face the challenges as we meet them. And um, on the digitalization, we have been trying to work with the, with the church clerks, especially as it, look, as it focuses on the, on the ACMS thing, those that can, with enough data can use their smartphones, even in the rural areas. We know it's not easy for people to get to a Wi-Fi site and so on, but we want to say, let's 
come together, work together as a church and do as much to support the church clerk in making sure this comes on board. And also, you will realize from the uh, report shown here that ACMS also is, has come into the treasury. And we are saying we want to use all the ways possible. We, we have Wi-Fi in the bush now. In some schools, we have Wi-Fi out there in the Bundu, and we are saying, as a church, let's come together, the church, wherever we are, let's support those areas that need our support to make sure that that is available in their areas, as we also have it in other uh, scopes of life. And finally, maybe on the grouping of churches, the grouping of churches might not be, we might not be able to say we will group only the one language churches under one district. It, it might be a desired end for some and not for others, but um, we will find that in most cases we are looking at the geographical area and Whenever we put those churches in those particular areas, we are addressing the needs that are there. And finally, as I said at the end of my report, the focus of the general conference uh, is to say, let's focus on those language groups where we are saying we are reaching out to them. And in our territory, you'll realize that the English has been adopted to address, especially in the, in the town settings, to say there are those who might not get the local language there, let's afford them an English church. And it has been tried in most cases, uh, working together with the conference, and I think we are trying to address that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope this answers, in addition maybe to what he has said about policy, he said it runs the organizations and institutions, but every member of the SDA church is free to get that policy so that you know how your church operates. Right? Yes. Now, this having been said, uh, may I see those who accept this report as presented. Let's use our yes cards. May we lift them up? Thank you very much. Opposed, let's use our no cards. Thank you, it carries. At this juncture, I will give our executive secretary his place to continue with the next item. Thank you, Pastor Chair. At this time, we move on to the Treasury report. And we have a team up front with, the, with our acting CFO to lead us out. I will give it to the team. They know how they are, they've organized themselves to give the Treasury report. Thank you, Pastor Chair. Good morning to you all. I hope you are okay. Maybe if we can stand and stretch, we'll assist ourselves so that we do not sleep. I realize it's hot, and people might doze off. Let us just stretch a little bit, because exciting things are about to come. Those who are sleeping, they will wake up because it's now the time for treasure. Thank you very much if we can sit down. Fortunately, I'm not reporting today. Uh, my task is a very simple one. It is to introduce one of us. We joke in the Treasury Department with our friends who are with the General Conference Audit Services. Uh, from the Treasury uh, side, we call them the accusers of the brethren. And they respond and say, no, we are the redeemer for Israel. So we have our time. So at this moment in time, I would like to introduce uh, Mrs. N. Svanda, who is coming all the way from Harare. 
uh, the Office of the General Conference Audit Services. So she's here, would like to welcome you to Bulawayo and specifically to South Zimbabwe Conference. She will be presenting, I'm sure in your booklets you noted that you have got a booklet which has got financial statements. And if you look uh, at your constitution, during a constituency meeting, the audit report is supposed to be presented. Are we together? So the first page is you are going to see there is a financial statement up to September. That one is not going to be discussed or even talked about. It's just for people to have an appreciation of what is happening. But what we're going to vote on are the audited financial statements uh, that come after the unaudited financial statements. Uh, are we together? So we have got a committee called the Audit Review Committee. It is a subset of our executive committee. And I would like at this moment to ask the Audit Committee for South Zimbabwe Conference that was serving in this triennium to stand led by Elder Clever Dick. If we can stand so that, uh, thank you very much. There is Elder Clever Dick on my extreme right. And then the secretary, you was, you was, you was the chair. The secretary is Mrs. Donga, and the other member is Elder Mshipe. So these are the, uh, these are the men who were representing us to receive the report which was sent. And now the auditor from the General Conference is going to give you a snippet or a report on what they reported to these, our committee members. Thank you very much. You may be seated. With these words, I welcome you, oh, uh, welcome Mrs. Swanda, and may you be a blessing to us as you have been the bl a blessing to the Treasury Department. I'll hand over to Mrs. Masu, who is going to do her report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Yes, I'm here to present the Treasury report for our triennium. Uh, it, is, it is being beamed, so already, like we've already said, the report is in the booklet, so we are just going to summarize. Uh, it's important for us to understand that South Zimbabwe Conference Treasury Department exists to provide financial leadership to its constituency. This includes receiving, safeguarding, and dispersing of the organization's assets in harmony with working policies and actions of the executive committee. The 2021 to 2023 triennium saw Zimbabwe being faced with a complex and challenging economic environment characterized by various factors. And I wish just to summarize those factors, which includes uh, inflationary pressures, foreign currency shortages, unstable exchange rates patterns, fiscal challenges, drought and uneven rainfall, and COVID-19. All these variables, we must understand, members, have an impact on the micro and macroeconomic environment. The giving patterns of the church members are affected as well as the entity's operations. Now, I want us to have a look at the gross tithe income received from churches. Remember, our reporting currency is in ZWL, but we are also going to give the gross tithe also in terms of the US dollar and the rand combined. As we are seeing from the patterns that we, the, the graph that has been beamed now, 
we are seeing that the budget in terms of ZWL and also we are seeing the actual which was received in terms of gross type. As we are noticing, friends, we are seeing that we have been operating below budget in terms of the tithe income that we are receiving. So in a way, we have got a variance, which in this case amounted to 521,153,893. So I want us to take note of this. On average, the monthly collections from churches amounted to ZWL 322,477,598 against an average monthly budget of ZWL 374,631,491. This meant that on average, the gross collection was 1.4 billion per church per month so when we're talking of all the churches, like we've already mentioned, we've got 223 churches. And also, like I said, we are, we've also summarized in terms of the US dollar and the rand. From the pattern that we are seeing there, the US dollar equivalent gross tithe collected from churches amounted to 1,175,405 against a budget of 1,242,668. On average, the monthly collections from the churches amounted to 117,540 against an average monthly budget of 124,164. This meant that on average, the gross collection was US dollar 527 per church per month. So like I said before, we're still looking at 223 churches. Right. We also want to make you aware that when we talk of gross tithe, we would not have remitted the 40% that is supposed to go to the union. We remain with 60%. And from the 60%, this graph which is being beamed now shows our 2023 net tithe retained by South Zimbabwe Conference in ZWL. The summary being, the net tithe retained by the conference amounted to 1.9 billion against a budget of 2.2 billion. This is a ZWL. On average, the conference retained on a monthly basis an average of 193,486,559 against an average monthly budget of 224 million. 778,895. This meant that, this meant that on average, the net tithe retained per church per month was 867,653. So we are still dividing that with the number of churches that we have, which is 223. Right, then the net tithe retained by South Zimbabwe Conference also in terms of US dollar and the rand. This is the graph which we have beamed uh, at the moment. As you are seeing also, if we still look at the blue, which is our, which is our actual that we received against the budget, we are also noticing a trend of our actual going down. The net tithe retained by the conference amounted to 705,243 against a budget of 745,001. 
On average, the conference retained on a monthly basis an average of US dollar 70,524 against an average monthly budget of 74,500. This meant that on average, the net tithe retained per church per month was 316. So we still divide with 223 churches that we have at the conference. I won't belabor you much with the, 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 the graphs. As you can see, the one that we have at the moment, the upward trend that you are seeing going up is just the ZWL component. And then at the bottom, you are seeing a, just a slight increase in terms of the US dollar and the rand combined. I will skip that and then go to our ratio, our ratios. Our ratios are showing that we are operating at 91.43% in terms of our working capital, and yet the recommended is 100%. And then now I'm just going to summarize the analysis of our strategic uh, plan which is shown here with the goals that were given on plans and resolutions. Goal number one, to have an adequately trained and efficient treasury department. We are seeing that the office of the treasury held a lot of meetings, were held annually and as needed to address uh, current issues that are faced in the treasury department. And we also had one union uh, treasury summit and two professional development meetings attended by treasury staff. Also trained all conference local treasurers as we're doing the launches and also we had one major treasury seminar that trained all the treasurers. We also have on achievements, the review of the treasury operations done by the beginning of each year, all treasury personnel together with 66 Bulawayo district church treasurers and their assistants attended, attended the Adventist church management system, which is popularly known as the ACMS treasury module implementation training, which was being conducted by personnel from SID. 66 Blawayo District Church treasurers and their assistants were given additional training to help with the implementation process. And also we, in the office, we are also holding regular trainings to our treasurers so that they familiarize themselves with the ACMS uh, treasury module. Both ZW, ZWC and SSC are availing free internet access to any of the treasurers using the new ACMS treasury module so that they facilitate the smooth running of, this, of the program. Goal number three, to be a well-equipped and self-supporting conference and then the achievements. We have the purchased relevant equipment relevant for our work. In this case, the 13 laptops and a conference uh, Toyota Hayes vehicle, purchase of 14 smart monitors, cell phones, and iPads, and also upgrading of the CCTV in order to improve on our internal controls and the installation of biometric access control system. Also, we, are, we have also purchased the two BizHub heavy duty printers. Some of the reports that you are seeing here were done through the heavy duty printers. And we are also working on managing financial resources to maintain a percentage of self-support above 
monthly. And then goal number four, to facilitate the improvement of conference infrastructure. And then on the achievements. On the achievements, we have got solar power for the Zizani House. Jojo tanks were put in order to improve on the water system at Bay Bridge Central and Zizani Houses. And we also built a boundary wall around Bay Bridge Central and Mapisa Houses. Mapisa House was tiled and painted and the ceiling was installed. And then also the conference offices, we also did major repairs on our windows, uh, which also in turn gave us a first lift to the, to the office. Uh, on the farm, a barbed wire was purchased and installed, and also the installation of the wooden cabin for the caretaker who is currently manning the farm. Uh, what we are saying is that we are going forward with the ACMS training module because that module is going to decrease our costs in terms of printing of receipt books. In terms of printing of receipt books. So we are going initially to roll out the module in Blawayo churches and then we are hoping before the end of year we would have rolled it out even to include the churches that are outside Blawayo. I uh, will skip all others because they are also summarized in the, in the report. And then I will just mention our challenges. Uh, the current economic crisis has resulted in a decline in tithes and offerings, making it difficult to make ends meet within the limited resources. And also we've noticed that the exodus of professionals and members in general to greener pastures has also affected our cash inflows. And also, we have also a situation whereby also our institutions are also facing financial challenges. It has also an impact on our operations also as South Zimbabwe Conference. And then our way forward, we are reaching out to members outside the country so that they are able to participate in stewardship. Uh, we are also budgeting conservatively and ensure total collection of, of income from all our churches. And also, like I said, we are going forward with the implementation of the ACMS treasury module in all our churches. Our mantra is to continuously improve on accountability transparency and efficiency in all our revenue collection system. And then finally, if we indeed have the truth for these last days, it must be carried to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. To accomplish this work, means is needed. I know that times are hard, money is not plenty, but the truth must be spread and the money to spread it must be placed in the treasury. This is a quotation from councils on stewardship, page 39. I thank you. We shall now give this opportunity to our treasury team to respond to the questions. Thank you. I'll start with the, 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 the latest one. Yes, we do audit. We've got internal auditors that make follow-ups, which is also part of our internal control system. And on that has been corrected with the churches that had been that have been that were attended to. And on a forum like this, would, it would not be proper for us to look at individual churches and look at individual reports. What you are here for is to summarize and let the church know that we do internal audit 
and we do make follow-ups on the amounts that the churches will be owing and that issue has been rectified. And also there was a question on the exchange rates that we are using. By policy, we, we are supposed to comply and use the SID exchange rates. These rates come to us beginning of the month, on the first of the month, the rates will be into our sun system and we use those exchange rates. So it's part of our compliance and we are complying. And also on the issue of reporting in ZWL, as we know, it's also part of compliance to re also report on the currency which the country is using. And in our case, we are reporting on the ZWL, but as you noticed when I was presenting, I was also trying to show you the trends in terms of the ZWL and also the trends in terms of the US dollar, which includes the rand, the pula, and other currencies, including the pound and the euro, if they are members that bring such tithes and offerings. Our situation is not too dire. As I mentioned, we are, our working capital recommended is 100%, but we are at 91%. So, which means operationally, we are operating above almost to the recommended working capital. Um, and then I also remember a question where someone asked about the buildings being put under the association. Yes, all our buildings in terms of compliance to policy have got to be put under a, an association. So this is meant to safeguard our, our assets and also for keeping uh, all the information that is pertaining to our buildings with the higher organization. And also there was a question on uh, churches uh, owing the conference or the conference owing the churches. Yes, we have a situation whereby as a conference, we are also acting as a bank to keep some of the funds for our local church. So when they, uh, there are anomalies those anomalies are attended to through our internal audit system. So when the internal audit system, when the report comes up, when there is an anomaly, we act on that and we rectify that. I thank you. Thank you very much. I hope that answers the questions. Yes, please. that uh, uh, we are having a response from uh, the nuclear office, which is the treasury. But the problem we are having in our district, it's not a summarized one. Um, I don't think it's um, uh, substantially honest to say that uh, the problem I have actually highlighted before is solved. Because what's happening now from my district, we are still chasing documentation to, to find evidence if the money is collected in the districts in Gwanda were actually sent to the conference or, or not. It happened this way. Um, during the COVID time and those times when uh, funds could not come to the conference like directly or went to the bank because the banks were closed or uh, the conference had no um, nostro account, um, it happened that churches were collecting money, especially Forex, and uh, depositing it by ABC in Gwanda. There was a book that all churches were logging into after depositing, depositing some funds at uh, ABC. Then after the auditor came to highlight that now Gwanda owes the conference some money, uh, the churches actually came with evidence that Money came from the churches to the ABC, 
Now the missing document is that book which the churches were logging into. It's actually missing. And the document documentation that is supposed to come from the conference to confirm that the conference has received some money is also missing. We didn't get stemmed slips. We are not seeing the book and we don't even know where the funds went to. But the evidence that we collected the monies and the treasurers submitted to the ABC is still there. And we feel it's not yet solved and corrected. Thank you very much. I think it's noted. It will be looked into. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, our questions have been answered. And when we divide conferences, in fact, we want to increase, right, faithfulness in members and also membership growth and things like that. Namanya mazuige, ugu divide ama conference aisiko ogwenza imalizie pans. I economy ye tu. Yio eyenza imbalizie njani pans. Linga kangela la pana agate skatani sa kona ugu tibukamba njani. Guya sineta. But economy, elizwe nilonke yio eshu pan. Siabonga, I think we are done. Okay. He it has been moving uh, for a long time, like I mentioned. It started by CFO Malufu, then came CFO Nube, then came CFO for, the, CFO the next and the next. So now, if it can't be answered here, we feel uh, maybe uh, we are short changed somewhere because our hands are, whole, are held. Thank you very much. It will be answered here. We shall ask Elder A. Nube, our union. A CFO to respond to that one. Thank you. Good uh, morning to you all. The Park Road issue has been an issue which has been highlighted by the speaker. And uh, I'm sure the district wrote, uh, the church wrote a letter which went to the conference. Uh, it's a reminder where the letter is that we need to action it and ensure that the executive committee sorts that one out. I will put my head on the block and ensure that we follow this up until its finality through you, Chair, if we can do that. And it is regrettable that we have a situation which is obtaining like what we are seeing uh, at Gwanda. That one again, Pastor Chair, I will make sure that I will follow it up with my team. Uh, so that we meet our stakeholders and we engage with them. We sincerely apologize for this lapse of inform information and the figures will definitely look into that. And then uh, there was a question which came on our financial statements, the, uh, combining the 2021, 2022, and 2023 financial statements. It has been noted the template that we are using for our financial statements, we are given by the SunPlus team from the General Conference Audit Service, I mean, from the General Conference SunPlus team. Definitely, we will engage them on those. Uh, on the, we will sort out the issues on the uh, notes which are not linked to the schedules. Uh, I am here to submit to you that we have heard that comment even from our executive committee members and we are currently working with our Sunplus team to sort this out. And then uh, the uh, speaker talked about the rent which is being owed. If you look at those, those are agency funds. We have got uh, at the conference members whom, or people whom we owe, not members, they say, people whom we rent property from, uh, they are in the diaspora, and uh, what they do is uh, they say we keep the funds 
and they would withdraw those funds as and when they need them. So that is for the rentals. As of uh, the last time I checked, because we get worried when we see the liabilities, as has been stated by the, chair, the, the member, we engaged the conference. Uh, the retirees, they've been up to date. The salaries for the workers also, they've also been paid. So we are constantly monitoring uh, all our institutions, not, all, not only uh, South Zimbabwe Conference only, uh, we have got even other entities under our care that have got challenges and we are working with them so that we address these issues. And then the association for uh, the association, the SDA association, it's a very, very old uh, association which was there to safeguard the assets of the organization such that when we build, we agree to be part of the association, we dedicate those churches and they uh, read as the association. So that in the event that we want to leave the church, the property for the church remains the property for the church. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much uh, for the explanation. I hope we have discussed enough. We have discussed enough. Yes, our time doesn't allow us to go further, further, right? Maybe you can see those concerned and then the issues will be addressed so that we cover some issues. Thank you very much, right? Uh, that concern, it's there in the, in the actual, it's on page 14. Um, if you look at page 14 in, in, in the... I, I think I have said we have discussed enough. Why don't you approach those that are concerned so that we catch up with time? There are many other reports that must come up. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, it has been discussed thoroughly and those things that are supposed to be noted have been noted. May I see the cards of those that are saying, yes, we accept the report as presented. Let's show by our yes cards. Thank you very much. Opposed, let's show by our no cards. Thank you, it carries. Thank you, it carries. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Pastor Chair. Um, now we move on to the Constitution and bylaws. May I request the members of the Constitution and Bylaws Committee here present to come up front so that we present this document together. And may I also request our Union Executive Secretary to come up front to assist us as a member of that committee. Thank you very much. It looks they might not be here yet. We will proceed and present the Constitution and Bylaws of South Zimbabwe Conference of Seventh Day Adventists. And we have the document in our bags. 
May I request that we take it out. Sihambendawonye. At every session, it is a requirement that we go through this. The Constitution and Bylaws Subcommittee that we set in 2020 has done its duty, went through the Constitution, and are recommending some amendments to the current Constitution so that as we go further into the new triennium, we may be using the new voted um, Constitution and bylaws. May I at this point point out that the amendments are guided by the model Constitution which comes from the General Conference. And from the model constitution, there are two types of font. The bolded statements, which cover the generality of the church worldwide. And for those bolded statements, we take them as they are. Then the light print, which is that which we can uh, make amends of. So you will notice that at some points, the adoptions are from the General Conference model constitution, and the other amendments are being recommended by this committee to us as the constituency meeting for adoption as um, we go into the new triennium. May I call your attention to page one. Article one, the name, there is no change. Take note of the blue print which says no change. It's just stating that we just took it as it is and we still have it in our old um, constitution. Then Article 2, Purpose. There are recommendations there. On line 17, it says, it gives us the rationale of the changes that we are recommending. And the rationale is GC adoption. That means we are adopting what is in the model constitution of the General Conference. And we want to adopt the article number two purpose to read as follows. And the red print, take note of the red print there, that's the new edition that has come in. The old constitution that we have been using, now there is uh, something there in red. That is the one that I will want us to take note of especially because those are the new amendments that we are recommending. On line number 24, those texts that are given there. Then article number three, relationships, no change. Article number four, geographic territory. The rationale is provincial boundaries. So there is a recommendation which is or which concerns the provincial provincial boundaries we move on to num page two the provincial boundaries in our old or in our current constitution line number 20 n reads south of kami road past sia pambili drive up to palule then follow the provincial boundaries through Lagisa to the Botswana border. But the new amendment that is being recommended by this committee includes Matebeleland North and Matebeleland South provincial boundaries. That is in red. We move on to page three. Article four, that's GC adoption. Article five, 
sorry, Article 5, that's GC adoption, that in red, Article 6, no change, Article 7, no change, Article 8, it's a GC adoption as indicated in the red there. We go to page 4, the bylaws of the South Zimbabwe Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, Article 1, no change, Article 2, the GC adoptions and amendments. I will, I will not uh, worry about the adoptions, they are there, but I'll take special cognizance of the amendments that are being recommended. On line number 28, if you look at line number 28, Article um, 2, Membership and Const Constituency Meetings, Section 1, Paragraph A. I'll pick it from line number 27. A method approved by South Zimbabwe Conference Executive Committee provided all member units receive the notice with sufficient time to select delegates. At least, on, number, on line 29, at least 30 calendar days before the date. In the old constitution, or the current one, it was saying 30 days. What is recommended is calendar days. We move on to page six. Page six, line 12 virtual attendance at constituency meetings. May I request uh, my Zook Executive Secretary to take us briefly on section three, just to give uh, an explanation on that one, virtual attendance at constituency meetings. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, section 3 deals with uh, the virtual attendance. You will remember that uh, in the past, <clears throat> you needed to be present uh, in a constituency meeting like this one for you to participate. But history and uh, circumstances have taught us that uh, there are some times, there are some instances where by it is not possible for all of us to participate at the same time like the manner it is happening here. COVID has taught us that uh, sometimes it's necessary for us to have what is called a hybrid system where you have those that are able to attend like we are here and those that cannot make it for different reasons. For example, during COVID time, the general conference session was in America. Others could not uh, manage to attend because of uh, the COVID laws in their countries, uh, some because of visa challenges, that kind of a thing. So the general conference has amended their own constitution and bylaws to accommodate this kind of a hybrid system whereby others can participate uh, physically present as we are here, while allowing for those that can also join in and participate virtually through the virtual uh, uh, platforms, as it were. What is only important is that uh, when voting is done, we vote at the same time. When discussions or business, business session is going on, at least all of us participate at the same time, which means the chairperson here will give time to those that are participating virtually to bring their submissions, their questions, and all those things. When voting is done, they are also considered at the same time. Those that are participating virtually are also considered their votes are counted, then also consider these that are here. So this is now coming as a recommendation to adopt that which the higher organization has adopted so that going forward in case we find ourselves in a situation that we, we find ourselves in during the COVID period, we are able to transact business with those that are present and those that are joining virtually. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Pastor. We move on to page um, 
that was page six, page seven, still the same, the red uh, amendments. Let me take you to page eight. There's um, not an adoption that, uh, on line number 17. It's a recommendation from your committee. Um, after looking at the phrase for cause when used in connection with the removal from an elected or appointed position, those were given numbers one up to six, but then they added or they are recommending an addition of insolvency as part of uh, the reason or, or cover, covered by the phrase for cause. Then the rest, uh, GC adoptions there on page eight and page nine, and also page 10, those are still GC adoptions, um, and page 12 and 13. May I take you back a little on page 10, sorry. On page 10, something I omitted which needs your attention. Page 10, line 39 and 40, and 40, up to 42. 39 reads, the chair of the organizing committee shall be the president of the union or his designee. That's uh, an adoption from the new um, model constitution in, from GC. Then the, the next sentence in black, the chair of the organization, organizing committee shall be the president of the Zimbabwe West Union up to, the, up to line 42. It's covered by the new adoption. May I request that you draw a line and cross it out. That black from line 40, the, the, the sentence in black up to line 42, let's, sorry, up to line 41, let me read it again. The chair of the organizing committee shall be the president of the Zimbabwe West Union Conference or his designee. Then we stop there, our crossing on line 41. Then the rest remains as it was. The rest remains as it was, okay. Then we go to page, we were now on page 13. Page 14 is at, as it is recommended there. Um, as I said, the rest are GC adoptions, which we just pick as they are on the model constitution. I was focusing much on those issues that were made or recommendations that are coming from our committee uh, as they were. Pastor Chair, I move the acceptance of the amendments to the Constitution of the South Zimbabwe Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Thank you. Thank you very much. It has been moved. Someone to second the motion. Second it. Thank you very much. Any observations or questions on this? Do I see a hand? Please come up to the mic. Seabonga Chair, Pesset. Gelugus is number thirty two. Conapo page ten. Bessi Gelugu Tatesi says that Kaisa and Guzzi introduce her. Okay, Sia Pambi. Mutaban and Gomo from Selpon Park District. Number thirty two or thirty three Lapa. Utena the organizing committee. Now, I see Nigga Le Page, Ubenz Utavani and Aboba born in Massin. Oh, Ben Campbell, until page 10, number 32 or 33. Thank you. Yeah, it, it reads The organizing committee shall be constituted as follows Each church, then our council district, Korapana, then Telugu Sisa Konaba. Okay, it's noted. It's noted. Um, Steve Mabuto from Keta. 
Um, I'm looking at page two and um, trying to come to terms with that statement, which says, south of Kami Road, past Sia Pambili Drive, up to Balule, then follow the Matabeleland North and Matabeleland South provincial boundaries through Lagisa to Botswana. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually trying to say, is Mat North actually included into our, into our constituency? Or we are simply following the boundaries of, of those uh, um, uh, districts? Thank you. It's noted. <clears throat> Thank you very much. My name is Tich Tsozo from Selborne Park. And possibly mine is an elaboration from my, my, my colleague from Cement. If you look at line 35 uh, up to line 37, uh, there's, a, um, there's an implication of numbers of delegates there, which is not coming out clear as to what that number is. I don't know if that is deliberate, because just reading those two lines, it's not clear what numbers are we what, talking what about. What page is that? Page 10 from line 35 to line 37. Okay, it's noted. Thank you, Pastor Che. I am Murel Mzenyi from Twakazi, Nchingwe District. I am on page two. Um, my concern is on is line four to line six on the demarcation of our boundary. Uh, whereby it says west of railway line from Chukwarakwara to Banukban, from Banukban through Adams Farm to the source of Shangani River, south of Shangani River up to Shangani Bridge on Harare Road. Uh, you will find out that the um, uh, members who are supposed to report to the South uh, Zimbabwe Conference, but they are reporting to the Central Conference. I don't know uh, how far are we concerning that issue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's come over to this side. Thank you. I have a few questions. Your name My first, name is sir. Klopas Petisa, coming from the multicultural district Baham Green. Uh, worshipping at Palm Green Church, therefore. Uh, I noticed the first issue at hand is about the realignment of the boundary and adopting the Matabele North and Mat South provincial boundaries. I would like to ask the conference what criteria is used. Okay, let me not say criteria, but can what steps should members or a church take if it sees that it would benefit them if the, if, the, if the boundary of the conference is realigned. How does it go about the process? Can it send a request to the conference or, and send a detailed issue as to how this can be managed? As I see, this is something which is already on the agenda on this one. And my next question is also on page 10, right? If you go to line 43 and uh, 44, uh, there is a cancellation, right? And then the next statement is the organizing committee shall nominate and the constituency shall elect. Uh, I don't know if I do not understand clearly or there is need for elaboration as to what these two lines mean. That's all. Thank, Thank you. you very much. It's noted. Next. Okay. Uh, my name is Baptist Moyo from Maranatha. Uh, may I refer you to page eight, uh, representations at constituency meeting uh, on the adoptions of GC, uh, number two, where it says delegates at large, delegates at large to a constituency meeting of this conference includes, then let me go to uh, C number one, it includes all South Zimbabwe conference employees holding credentials or ministerial licenses issued by the conference, this conference. May I move Mr. Chairperson that these statements also incorporates 
uh, the statement from page 282 SIT Working Policy FA25, where it says employment of chaplains in denominational institutions. When employed by denominational institutions, a chaplain is entitled to credentials or, or licenses. I move that these statements also be incorporated to this one where it talks about ministers. Thank you, it's noted. Thank you. I think we can now respond to the questions. Over to you. Thank you very much. Um, some of the issues I will ask my pastor here to look at them. On page 10, line 35 to 37. Okay, before we, go, we get to line 35, line 33, I will leave that to Pastor Nkanyezi to uh, address us on that one. And then uh, line 35 to 37, the plus one additional member for each members or a major fraction thereof. In addition, the at-large delegates to the constituency meeting shall select persons from the at-large delegate group to serve on the organizing committee. I think that relates to the at-large delegates and uh, he might want to touch on it also. Then the other question on line 43 and 44, the difference between the cancelled one and the new adoption is that the first one, the, the cancelled one, was in light print. And then the adoption is bold print. So the light print, we could amend it, we could do something with it, but now we are adopting what is now in the new GC model constitution, which is in bold print. That's why you find it's more or less the same wording, but now the change is the light print going into the bold print. I hope that helps. Then um, page two, lines four to six. Uh, page two, lines four to six. The west of the railway line from Chikwarakwara to Panokpan five, from Panokpan through Adams Farm to the source of the Shangani River, south of Shangani River up to the Shangani Bridge to Harare. If I got your question well, uh, the issue of borders. The issue of borders was done during the, during the realignment and uh, we are not reinventing the wheel but uh, just going with the borders that are there. But I suppose with guidance from my leaders, I think whenever there is a need at the local territory, you discuss that, that you agree as a, as a church, you make a recommendation through your pastor, it goes to the conference and so on. That's how we work as a church. If there is something that we want to recommend, uh, you see the need, give the, 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 the pros and cons, and send it up to the conference, it's looked upon. Um, maybe uh, the chair will Say something Concerning on that this one. one, I think his issue is about members who cross the border going to the other conference. Okay. This is why we created a new district where he is pointing at. 
So the pastor who is now stationed there is to service those members so much that they feel at home in our conference without crossing over to the next conference. By doing that, we are solving that problem. Thank you very much. Still on the same page too, there was a question on the Mate Belele North and uh, the, the current constitution just says then follow the provincial boundaries. But uh, the, the committee felt we need to be specific which provincial boundaries we are talking about. So it's Mat North and Mat South where this uh, border. Thank you so much. I, let me give over to my pastor to take us, to take us on the other two. Then I'll look at the last one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Looking at uh, Article 4, uh, constituency meeting committees and Section 1, that is uh, from line 32, uh, just going down, I'll just uh, highlight a few things there. Uh, section 1A says the organizing committee shall be constituted as follows. Uh, the old current working Constitution and bylaws document has district there. And this is what we will use because uh, even after voting this one, this one will begin uh, being in force uh, January 1, 2024. So the one that we are going to use has district there. But the model constitution that has come from the General Conference now has church there. Are we together, friends? Yes, it has church there. So in this church, when there is an adoption that is coming from the higher organization, even if you don't understand it, or even if you are not in agreement with it, you will ask and understand as you implement. That is Adventism. Is the church with me? However, we, we, we have uh, observed and communicated to the powers that be during the year-end meetings uh, at the SIG as executive secretaries uh, for the unions within this territory. We came together, we looked at this, and we registered a concern uh, with the Secretary of the Department of the General Conference and the uh, policy uh, uh, in-house policy committee. And uh, we want to thank the Lord and to thank them in absentia because uh, they acted on this thing immediately. They consulted with the general conference, uh, which uh, responded in, in no time. We got the communication that uh, this was an oversight. You, you'll remember that uh, the other side uh, of the world uh, their, their, their churches are so small. Their conferences have very few people in terms of membership, as, as it were. So for them, uh, even if they say all churches or all delegates represented there, still the number of people uh, who would be there are just uh, manageable to, 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 to the extent that they, they can transact in that way. So it was an oversight, and this thing comes in a bolted section of the General Conference such that we cannot tamper with it. So now the General Conference has issued a statement uh, to, 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 to the World Church acknowledging the mistake or the oversight that happened there. So this area must be considered as a fine print to allow the Constitution and Bylaws Committee to suggest whatever is uh, feasible and workable within their own circumstances. Imagine, if we were to stand by this, we have about uh, 36 districts and how many organized churches? Two, two, three. Two, two, three. So this suggests that uh, if uh, this was not done from January 2024 going forward, all regular delegates that are registered 
in a constituency meeting form or a part of the organizing committee. Imagine the kind of chaos, you know, that uh, the chairperson will have to go through to really coerce us to the point of choosing whatever number, 15, 17, 23 people that will make up the nominating committee. In my culture, they say, you know. So the church has acknowledged this. It will be corrected, but they have given us the green light to say, as we do this, if we have not received an official communique from the, the, at least they have winked at this, we consider it as a fine print. So which means, we will leave it as written uh, in the policies, but we will operate at least uh, using the district thing so that we are able to function on that one. Then uh, the issue of, of the numbers that uh, the speaker was asking about here comes in that same context. Church X has just a few uh, members, a uh, few uh, 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 I mean, districts or churches that make up the... So every point that is here, so that they have a considerable uh, 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 number of people that can transact business. Then they kind of put some, some quota systems to say, if uh, Church X has a membership of about 70 or 100 plus, you know, then they are entitled to a delegate plus then anything that comes uh, over and above the 70 or, 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 or 100 that they are created upon, then they are entitled to another delegate, then, you know, that, that kind of quota system. And here in Africa, the church is oversubscribed. We have many people, we don't need all that kogelela, kogelela thing so that we have people. We already have people. Are, are we together, friends? No. So, uh, that, that, that one we will not bother as much because uh, I don't think there is an organized church here that has a, a membership in excess of 2,000 that can be entitled to that. If we have such, then we'll consider it when, when it becomes reality to us. Then finally, line number 43. The organizing committee shall nominate uh, that one was uh, in a fine print before. That's why you see they are striking it off. We are adopting the new one that is coming from the general conference where that statement is in bold. So the committee was thorough not to ignore even a tint, just a dot or an iota. So everything, this is according to book. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Pastor. And the last one was in reference to page eight, where that's line 47, if I got it right, all South Zimbabwe conference employees holding credentials and ministerial licenses issued by this conference. Um, currently, we are where we are, where it's implying to the South Zimbabwe conference employees. It's true that institutions under South Zimbabwe Conference have got people that uh, have credentials and ministerial licenses, but not all of them in that light are delegates at large. So the, the line there implies that for you to be a delegate at large is you are a South Zimbabwe Conference employee. We have institutions like this university. It has uh, so many of those who have credentials, who have uh, ministerial licenses, but are not delegates at large for this conference. Until such a time where we get there, we will still be implementing those that are in the employ of South Zimbabwe Conference. But institutions have, can be invited as uh, invitees like we did with some of uh, our, our institutional employees who are here. So when we say employees, we are referring to those that are in the payroll of the conference. But if you are in the payroll of Solusi, payroll of Maranatha, payroll of uh, other institutions or our hospitals and so on, 
you, uh, you might have the credentials which are issued by the conference, but you are not in the payroll, so that's the difference. But otherwise, we are all one family. Pastor Chair. It was moved. We have discussed, commented, and asked questions. May I, at this juncture, ask those that agree that we accept the amendments show by raising their yes cards. Yes. My apologies, I thought maybe after the Executive Secretary of the Union had made his comments, we would be allowed to, to ask further. I'm going back to page 10. I'm going back to page 10. Now this booklet says there, these are amendments effective for December 2023, which is today. And the lines that are from line 35 on page 10, in fact from line 33, if I'm hearing the Executive Secretary of the Union correctly, we are going to amend this, but because we're in Africa, we're not going to use church as suggested in the, in the Constitution or in the amendment. We're going to continue using district. And if I'm looking at this correctly, these things are in light print, meaning to say we have the right not to amend. If I understood the Executive Secretary, of the conference correctly, and also page one of the document. It says, if it's in bold, we can't change. But if it's in light print, we can change. This is saying, each district, it is in light print. Our committee has changed it to each church. And we want to vote to say each church can choose one delegate. From the explanation, we'll have 232 odd delegates. Why are we proceeding to adopt the amendment when clearly for Africa it doesn't make sense? Thank you very much. I think he responded. Let him continue and clarify. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, that's a good question from the speaker. Um, the claimants that we have received from the General Conference it is an understanding uh, that uh, there was an oversight or a mistake there. But uh, in terms of appropriateness and alignment, the bold section of the model constitution is adopted as it is. So we adopt it as it is with the understanding of the claimants that we have been given. You know. Secondly, what we are voting here is not for use today. <laughs> it will be used in the next coming constituency meeting. I think by then, the general conference would have corrected what they need to correct. Otherwise, as Adventists, we cannot have a constitution and bylaws that is bearing or recording something otherwise different from what the union has, what the, G I mean, the, the division of the general conference and the GC. So in terms of what is written, we adopt as it is. In terms of operation provisionally, you know, for those that would want to use this now, but not for us. For us, we are using the old constitution that we, we used to bring you here. Imagine, if we are to change the syllabus now, then we'll need to send you back, for those of you that have bigger churches, to bring the extra delegates that we are talking about. You hear what I'm saying? It will create all the confusion that we don't need here. You know? So here we will use the old uh, constitution that has been running for the past triennial for the purpose of this meeting. Then these adoptions are effective January 1 going forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. I think that clarifies the question. We were at the point of voting. Let's see those who say we adopt the Constitution and its amendments. Thank you. Opposed by the no card. 
Thank you, it carries. Thank you, Pastor Chair. At this point in time, may I request the Zimbabwe West Union President and team to take over. <laughs> 